Hey YouTube, uh, this is my first ever video, which is very exciting. Um, so, doing a bit of a project today, um, I can tell you a bit of a reason for doing that project. So, number one, uh, this is my main fish tank. Uh, I had an anchor operation in the summer, so this was my project, and um, it's an old 120 litre tank that I had when I was about 14, 15, something like that and um, haven't had it up for years, it's been in my mum's um, garage, catching dust, and my brother bought it up for me in the summer, cleaned it up, it was in the right state, um, it's got an old BioLife filter that's not even in production anymore, uh, I've had to customise a lot of the stuff in there, put loads of um, filter media that I got off eBay, and um, yeah, I'm really happy with it now. So, I got a bit obsessed with uh, fish tanks, as I'm sure a lot of you can relate to, and um, just constantly wanted another one, and another one, and another one. Uh, so far I have two, um, and I'll show you the other one in a second. It's uh, an old um, Bi Orb. It's not particularly nice, but it was free. I always went when I was younger, read that they are like the tank of death, and um, that you, know, you shouldn't go anywhere near them. Uh, then did a little bit of research and found some sort of little hacks to make it a bit better. Uh, put mechanical media at the very bottom um, and um, changed the um, filtration slightly so that it's a bit better. Um, and, um, and, and did a bit of a couple of coats of paint on it to make it a kind of a, a, a copper colour rather than a horrible kind of matte silver colour. But that's not the real story. The real story is that I keep asking for a third tank. Um, Especially because the, the um, biop's not particularly big, it's not really the tank I wanted, I just kind of got it because it was free. Um, really I'd like a nice, um, probably a Danel, um cube tank, not, not too big, maybe 60 litres, but still a nice, nice sized tank for my office. Uh, and so I want a third tank. Uh, but I was told, no, no, two tanks is more than enough, three tanks is ridiculous. Um, and I'm sure there's loads of people watching that have way more than three tanks, so count yourself lucky. Um, so, uh, we had a bit of a joke one day, and um, my partner said, if you can get a fish to jump from uh, one tank to another tank, then you can have a third fish tank. And she suggested that I set up my first original teeny tiny tank uh, as another tank up next to the tank upstairs to uh, to make the jumping happen. And I thought, yeah, I can make that happen. I looked in the dictionary, uh, looked at the definition of jump, and most people kind of summarise jump as being, you know, literally leaving the air and, 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 and propelling yourself forward, but there's plenty of other definitions of the word jump that just mean to move from one place to the other. So I figure that's possible, right? Uh, so I look on YouTube, see a lot of Joey's videos about uh, water bridges, and I think, yeah, water bridges are possible. Uh, but I get to thinking, this is not a long-term thing. I don't want to always have a water bridge. This is literally to win a bet. So how can I do it a bit differently? Uh, so that's what I'm going to show you now. Okay, so uh, this is my bio that I was talking about. And uh, literally 10 minutes before I start making these videos, I... Uh, put some little um, uh, ember tetras in there. So it's the first time it's properly been stopped. It's got uh, five ember tetras. Literally cannot see them at all in there. They've, both, they've all gone to the bottom. Um, sunk down and hidden away. So this was down in the basement until this morning. And I went down there. I got it. I had one piece of Java rock um, left over from... Um, from doing this tank and I smashed it up into three bits, put a little bit of gravel at the bottom and I've just made a very, very basic um, setup. Purely because, like I say, this is just doing a bet. This is then going to be dismantled again and I'm going to have a 60 litre that hopefully will go up here. So the task that I've been set in order to get my 60 litre tank uh, is to get fish to jump. And in my definition of jump, that means that somehow they're going to move between here and here. So, you've seen all the Joe's videos and everyone else that have done uh, 
uh, fish bridges before, um, aquarium bridges, and uh, most people build a kind of rectangular um, uh, acrylic um, uh, thing that goes up like that along and back down again and as great as that looks it also has got a lot of hassle for something that's just to win a bet if i was going to do this long term if i was going to keep it up like that i think maybe it'd be cool to give it a go uh, but the reality is that this is just about um winning a bet and then dismantling it saying i got a fish to move from here to here and then calling it a day maybe once they've gone back uh, and that's it so i thought how about some piping? I looked on eBay. eBay is literally the best place ever for fish stuff. And I looked for the thickest uh, diameter piping that I could find. And I found 60 mil um, pool piping. So this is for swimming pools. Uh, it's still relatively flexible. Uh, and I bought a meter of it for like 10 quid. Um, and um, I'm going to bend it. It's annoying that it's so hard that it might not bend as well as I wanted to, but then the ember touches I got in there, which will be the ones doing this uh, feet, are really, really tiny. So I figure actually even in the bend, there's actually still quite a lot of space, even at the bend, because it's a lot bigger than you think. Everything. So I'm gonna get around, I'm not gonna quite tighten up, and then I'm gonna, um, Put another, a smaller one through like that. And that will enable me to get that clip that I had earlier. I'll put it in, and this way it won't be the wrong, um, won't have to be bent the right way, if you know what I mean. So that should work a bit better. So, like that. that to that table tie and then I can go ahead and tighten this once it's under so that that's all good just gonna move it down a little bit I don't want I don't want the surface area to be too far off and then that should mean I can just clip it on to the edge It's so much easier with two foot you get two fingers around both edges. Okay, so I realised in the whole endeavour of trying to make the clips work, which are definitely just not big enough, and I will buy some more ones, but I realised that with the table tie around either side, it was enough of a lip to stop the pipe going down any further. And so actually what we have is the pipe inserted and balanced with no problems. My only issue is the bend and whether or not that's big enough. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to stretch out this one to the left to open the bend up a little bit and see what we can do. If we go further to the left, we can open up the bend. Okay, update. Cable ties to the rescue. So I put a cable tie around the um, edge and then I connected one up that way. A cable tie around this one and a cable tie connecting this and this together. And actually, it's created a very stable thing. Uh, and then into here and down here and enters in there. Oh, and there's a little ember tetris hiding down the back there. 
I'm going to try using the magnet and trying to get this as close to the top as possible using a magnet and then see it'll stay right at the very top. Right, so my thinking is that I should be able to drag this up with the magnet. Hold it where it needs to go, roughly in the middle, and then pop this back in. Right, I think finally we are good to go. So that's the levels equalizing. Ah, so it's not quite far enough down on this side. There we go. I do believe we have a viable bridge. <laughs> Fingers crossed. I can just remove this relatively straightforwardly. Without causing too much panic. And there you go. We have a bridge between two tanks. So hopefully they can jump. So now I'm going to just sit, wait, hope, and I'll uh, show you when a fish finally goes across. So I've just set up some lighting. A bit rudimentary, obviously, because the light no longer fits properly on top. But nonetheless, you can see into the tank on both sides and I use the old uh, LEDs that I had from when this tank was set up in my flat. So the pipe goes in there, goes over like this. There's not too much of a kink in it, which is good. And then it comes out the bottom there. So I am waiting for someone to go up that pipe over here and to here and then I win myself a third fish tank <laughs> A little update for you, it's been about 36 hours so far since I set up the um, aquarium bridge over to there and so far we've had no attempts to use it however I've stocked the biob a little bit more now so we have um, the ember tetras which are now very happily swimming around all over the place so they're up at the top there and we have some flame tetras who are just swimming past right now and then also coming into shot is the garami from the big tank I think maybe he might be the person to do the jump across to there. Fingers crossed. Go on. Go on. Go on. Go on. Oh. 
So close. Quick update on this tank. Uh, I've put a new plant in there, obviously, um, but also I've been putting some Pleco Flake in there because I'm hoping that the smell of it uh, will um, get the pipe across and down and hopefully it'll cause some interest. Fingers crossed. Okay, quick update. It's been about three weeks and we don't appear to have had any fish um, swim through the tube. However, we do have some intruders who are swimming through the tube. Apparently, they do not help me win my bet. Nonetheless, they are about halfway up. Here they are. Some snails. Oh my god, there is a fish inside there! <laughs> oh. <sighs> Did I win the bet? Did you put him over there? I genuinely didn't. I, mean, I can't even get a fish to... I, I can't even get, like, a... Look, I would have been really cruel to have dropped him through that gap or whatever. You did it, babes. You did it. <laughs> oh, I wonder if he's going to get back at any point, any time soon. I better put some food in that side for him. Oh, I can't believe a fish finally swam through it. Oh, go on, go back. Go back. Look at these, uh... I do. Maybe the snails yeah. enticed him up. Look, they're all along. I know, there's loads of them as well. Wow, you did it. Babe, does that mean that I can have a third fish tank? I'm not seeing it on film. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the tube, Sir Colin. <laughs> Everyone, this is Sir Colin. He is one of my oldest fish and Funnily enough, I think he is trying to make himself his way back to his original home. He's found his way up into the tube twice now. Um, caught him on camera this time. Katie caught him on camera the previous time. He seems to be quite keen on the old tube. Off camera, I just got very excited because Sir Colin got very close to going into the other tank. Um, but he has then turned around and come back to the middle. So, Sir so Colin is up there, and so I'm hanging out, waiting to see if anything else happens. Whilst I've been doing that, I've also been looking in here, and I realise the Tetra isn't there. And I've done a little bit of counting. I have a sneaking suspicion that this might be him. Just there in the middle of the shot. I'm afraid today Sir Colin didn't fancy doing anything other than dropping back down into his home. Never mind. Okay, so it's been about three months now since that feat of uh, the Tetra and uh, Sir Colin. Sir Colin's still in the corner here enjoying his tank. Um, I took the uh, bridge down as you can see uh, because um, it was a relatively unstable system even though it, it did, did serve its purpose. It wasn't saying I was going to keep forever and it seemed very silly to have the potential for uh, water damage to my lovely books on a constant basis and the uh, unlikely event that it might have um, leaked or spilt over. It just seemed like a silly kind of endeavour to have. Uh, nevertheless, everyone has enjoyed um, taking the mick out of me about it at work. The fact that I've had this bridge up for a couple of months. Uh, the fact that I actually got a fish to cross it and I've won my bet. Um, uh, I've just been editing the videos uh, just now and putting this video together as a sort of a final wrap up. Uh, and Katie did point out to me that I do seem like the most miserable fish keeper imaginable. Um, I can assure you that I absolutely love doing this. Uh, just have a little bit of a dry uh, way of speaking when I'm trying to get my head around a, uh, a task. Um, and um, yeah, so uh, I suppose the best way of ending this video is to tell you the best news, which is that not only have I won my bet and I'm going to be getting a third fish tank for in the office, to go up here, um, but also um, I think my uh, love of fish has certainly um, shown Katie that, that 
that this is something I'm really serious about. And she has agreed uh, to let me turn the basement into my very own fish room. Uh, so next week I'm going to be uh, tanking it, as in waterproofing it, uh, and um, hopefully over the next couple of months I can have um, some breeder tanks down there. So I will make some videos about that and um, bring you along the journey. Uh, so thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. I know it's relatively uh, tame and, and silly, um, but um, we did nonetheless get a, uh, a fish, one of these little tetras, to jump from one tank to another. Thanks for watching.